Writers and actors are striking in sunny California and a movie studio just so happened to trim the city's trees that were providing shade to the protesters. You know what that means. It finally happened. We're talking tree law, baby. Eee, tree law finally happened, yay. All right, so uh, the city of Los Angeles has fined NBC Universal $250 after the company trimmed ficus trees that striking writers and actors were using for shade while picketing at the Universal Studios lot. Was this a deliberate attempt to hurt the strikers during an unprecedented heat wave as the mayor and strikers alleged? And if so, then why is Universal only getting a slap on the wrist? Or was it just a simple misunderstanding and coincidence? Well, welcome to the wild world of tree law. Now on July 17th, writer and SAG member Chris Stevens shared a photo of a row of ficus trees outside of the Universal Studios lot in Los Angeles. Quote, quick shout out to the good people at Universal Picks for trimming the trees that gave our picket line shade right before 90 plus degree week. It appeared that the trees had their branches and leaves trimmed down over the weekend. When strikers showed up for the picket line on Monday, they found that their shade was gone. And in the photo, you can see the before and after that Stevens referred to. Stevens and the other strikers suggested that the tree trimming was a pretext to take shade from striking SAG after workers. The union's 160,000 members went on strike in July, along with the 11,000 Writers Guild of America members who have been on strike since May. Now, in most cities, you can't just trim or remove trees without a permit. Uh, as most people on the internet seem to know. Uh, in Los Angeles, these trees are along a sidewalk that is considered public property. Their maintenance is under the jurisdiction of the Urban Forestry Division of the Bureau of Street Services. The Urban Forestry Division manages nearly 700,000 street trees, growing along 6,500 miles of public roads, making the city of Los Angeles' street tree population the largest urban forest in the nation and possibly the world. And Streets LA has a website where you can actually look up all 700,000 trees in the city. And when I type in 3801, one Barnum Boulevard into the search site, it pulls up those that line the streets that are in question here. And since so many people have a passion for tree law, yes, I see you, 78,000 members of Reddit's tree law forum, let me do a quick rundown on this apparently intoxicating legal speciality. Uh, in the United States, state and local governments have jurisdiction over tree laws. Tree law governs issues like who owns trees, how neighbors handle tree disputes, whether a tree is on government property, when trees become hazardous, and whether a person can cut down trees on their own property. Now, generally, if your neighbor's tree branches or roots cross onto your property, you can cut them down if they're creating a hazard. However, if you damage your neighbor's tree in the process, you might have to pay for the damage. Now, tree law is a very thorny issue, but if you need to branch out and get a great lawyer, my firm, the Eagle Team, can help. If you've been in a car crash, suffered a data breach, or have social security disability issues, we can represent you or help find you the right attorney who can. Just click on the link in the description for a free consultation with my team, because you don't just need a legal team, you need the Eagle Team. The link is below. Now, Los Angeles has special rules for protected trees, covering mostly oak trees that are indigenous to California. Uh, illegal pruning or willful damage to protected oak trees can result in a $10,000 fine uh, and or six months in jail. The city also protects heritage trees, which are, quote, individual trees of any size or species that are specifically designated as uh, heritage because of their historical, commemorative, or horticultural significance. Uh, there are steep fines for damaging trees with historical significance, like the Tuna Canyon Detention Station's uh, Tahunga Oak Grove. These trees are the last remnant of a World War II era Japanese detention camp. Uh, the ficus trees outside of Universal Studios lot located at 3801 Barnum Boulevard are not protected or historical. Instead, they are considered, quote, a parkway tree. A parkway tree is a tree that is planted by Public Works or the developer who built the building adjacent to the edge of the roadway. Now for parkway trees, the city follows the recommendations of the International Society of Arbor Culture, which generally recommends that most trees be trimmed during the dormant season. The dormant season for ficus trees is fall or winter. Arborists uh, were also concerned about the way the universal trees were trimmed because they appear to have been topped. Now, topping is the removal of the top of the central stem of a tree, uh, called the leader, as well as the upper main branches. Now, Los Angeles has formally adopted the American National Standard Institute's pruning standards. The ANSI says, quote, topping and lion's tailing shall be considered unacceptable pruning practices for trees. Uh, Universal told Deadline to quote, prune these trees annually at this time of the year. Though one Constantine Anthony, a member of SAG AFTRA, questioned whether this was true. We can't find any work orders done for this particular tree trimming, which is problematic. In Southern California, we have a lot of laws governing trees. Normally you don't trim until October. Um, and in fact, the exact same style and type of tree, about 200 feet this way, are not trimmed. 
but those aren't providing shade to the picketers, are they? LA City Controller Kenneth Mejia investigated the matter and said his office hadn't given Universal a tree trimming permit in three years. He concluded that Universal should have gotten a permit. And Mejia fined NBC Universal $250 because that is the maximum penalty allowed for a first time offender. He tweeted that, quote, Streets LA fines all first time offenders, regardless of the number of trees at issue, a $250 penalty. If violations continue, the fines can grow to $1,000. If trees are found to be significantly damaged, LA can require the offenders to plant two trees per damaged tree. Now I should note, as a longtime former resident of Los Angeles, I've seen these kinds of trees uh, all over the city of LA and often pruned in this manner. Uh, I have no idea whether people are getting permits for this kind of thing, but it also seems like a lot of people tend to prune these kinds of trees in the summertime. So at least from that aspect, anecdotally in my own personal experience, it doesn't seem that out of character. Uh, and in this case, Streets LA determined that the trees didn't suffer significant damage and would easily recover in six to 12 months. Mejia pointed out that LA's 12 tree inspectors have the impossible job of monitoring over 700,000 trees. And he said the system isn't working as intended. And as much as I'd love to demonize the movie studios here, another issue with these kinds of trees is that they grow so fast that they often tend to interfere with traffic. So uh, it wouldn't be surprising if one wanted to err on the side of trimming the trees rather than letting them grow wild, which literally can impact the uh, cars that are uh, driving by. But the city's fine here isn't the end of the story between the unions and Universal. Both SAG-AFTRA and the WGA filed formal unfair labor practice charges against Universal. An unfair labor practice, uh, referred to as a ULP, is an action by an employer or a union that violates the National Labor Relations Act. And the NLRA was passed in 1935. Its aim is to encourage collective bargaining between workers and employers. And the NLRA gives employees the fundamental right to seek better working conditions uh, without fear of retaliations. Now, classic examples of a ULP by an employer include firing or penalizing employees who exercise any of the rights under the NLRA, including the right to picket an employer, uh, as those striking actors and writers were doing outside of the Universal lot. And the SAG after charge says, quote, Universal was interfering with lawful picketing activity by designating as picketing locations areas uh, where the public sidewalks have been covered up with construction fencing, forcing picketers to patrol in busy streets with significant car traffic, where two picketers have already been struck by a car, and by refusing to provide K-rail barriers to establish pedestrian walkways for picketers to use after Los Angeles Police Department advised the employer weeks ago in the interest of public safety to do so. The union said that this was suspiciously time construction and that the loss of tree shade during a record heat wave has forced SAG-AFTRA to determine that it cannot safely send its members to picket at NBC Universal. Now Universal said it regretted that its decision quote created unintended challenges for demonstrators. Uh, that was not our intention. In partnership with licensed arborists, we have pruned those trees annually at this time of the year to ensure that the canopies are light ahead of the high wind season. Now, it's certainly possible that this was simply a coincidence and not a ULP, we just don't know. Uh, but it's also important to look at why the unions are striking in the first place. Because for the first time since Ronald Reagan was the union boss, yes, that is actually a thing that happened, the unions representing actors and writers are staging a strike at the same time. The actors and writers are negotiating with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, or AMPTP. And the AMPTP represents major studio bosses and producers such as Sony, Universal, Paramount, Walt Disney Studios, Warner Brothers, plus major streamers like Netflix, Amazon, and Apple TV+. And the strikers are concerned about a number of different topics, including low pay, residuals, streaming and the use of AI. And those topics probably require uh, their own dedicated video. And while YouTubers aren't generally members of these unions, we definitely know what it feels like to be screwed over by movie studios and television producers. So if you'd like to support the unions in their negotiations, you can donate to the link that's down in the description, including SAG-AFTRA's Emergency Financial Assistance Program, which gives emergency financial aid to members with great urgent need. And their Green Envelope Grocery Aid provides grocery assistance to striking writers and actors. And if you know any striking actors or writers, you can get them groceries directly with today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Absolutely everyone loves HelloFresh. And if you already have a HelloFresh subscription, why not get a subscription for one of these striking writers or actors? Because HelloFresh is a great way to eat delicious fresh food while still being healthy. It's a great way to get back into a diet or just eat great food. In fact, HelloFresh has a whole variety of calorie smart, carb smart, pescatarian and veggie options. You can customize it how you like to. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week. Right now they have summer favorites from backyard bratwurst bars to tangy key lime pie. Now I'm a do it yourself person and I have to say, I was initially pretty skeptical about HelloFresh. I'm a pretty good cook, so I didn't think that I needed the help, but actually I loved it. Even for an experienced cook, HelloFresh delivers new ingredients and recipes that I would never try on my own. 
And of course, everything was delivered straight to my door, so I didn't have to do any shopping. The produce actually gets to you faster than a grocery store, so it arrives at peak freshness and flavor. And it's also super easy to save time. HelloFresh cuts out the meal planning and prep, so the recipes only take 20 to 30 minutes to cook. Literally less time to cook than it would normally take to do the shopping. And HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout. So if you'd like to try HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code LegalEagle50 at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. Yes, you can actually get 50% off plus free shipping by clicking on the link that's on screen or down in the description. So click on the link below and use the code LegalEagle50 at checkout. After that, click on this link over here for more Legal Eagle, or I'll see you in court.